Hello friends, good evening and welcome to another session of Tech Tablet Daily Dose with Varun Rao. In today's session, we would be looking at the part 2 of SAP HANA interview questions. We've already seen or looked at the part 1 of SAP HANA and today we would be looking a bit more, right? And as we already know, the business expectations from any employer towards an SAP HANA consultant, they are huge. The expectations are humongous. So I would expect you to be on your toes when you're going for an interview. Be prepared to get grilled and roasted because this interview is getting hot, right? So the first question for today is what do you understand by in-memory concept of SAP HANA? I should have taken this in the first video, but still in-memory concept of HANA means nothing but the data is stored in RAM. That's it right and a normal conventional database transfer you know when it happens from memory it generally takes five milliseconds but sap hana thanks to the in memory it takes only five nanoseconds so from milli to nano right and sap hana also uses multi-core cpu architecture and stores the data in rows and columns as designed in sap hana database what is the concept of persistence layer right now Whenever you're handling any operation, right? And let us consider that all of a sudden you have some interruption and whatever you've designed till now, maybe it's, you know, got disrupted because of any reason, like you do not have a power supply or maybe you have a sudden shortage in your CPU and your screens all gone black. Now at this point of time, the persistence layer comes into picture, right? Now what happens here is like whenever you're working with something, you have something called as save points in SAP HANA. So these save points are the ones which are built on the concept of persistence layer of SAP relational database, right? And besides managing log data on the disk, HANA's persistence layer also allows to read and write data operations via all storage interfaces. So persistence layer, remember this list all the advantages of column based tables we have seen row based tables in our previous video part one and here we have column based tables column based tables generally allow us a smoother parallel processing of data right as this is not rows as simple as that and to access the data from multiple columns every operation can be allotted a separate processor core now get this clearly one specific column needs to be approached for select query and any column can be used for indexing. This is the second point, which means that, you know, even if there is a specific column that needs to be approached, you know, if with a select query, any column can be used for indexing. So this is the second one. The third one is efficient operations. This is what it is. The rest is about its explanation. So it has an efficient operation since most columns hold unique values. So therefore the compression rate would also be high. Hence the efficiency would be greater. So these are some advantages of column based tables. Then you have what are the benefits of using calculation views with star joint. It basically simplifies the design process, my friends. And what it does is it also eventually allows you to select multiple measures or you know multiple precautions from your multiple fact tables if you have what is new calculated column in hana modeling view new calculated column is defined as a column added on the fly or maybe during the runtime in analysis tab when a view is activated or triggered so like let us consider that you have a view and after the view is triggered you want some table or something to be displayed how would this happen this happens because of new calculated column now what happens is here actually the column does not exist at database level or in any data foundation or star join level do keep this in mind i would just like to repeat this column does not exist at database level or in data foundation or at start join level. You basically cannot see this. It is just done on the fly. The next is explain SLT. Now this is also another important question. SLT is abbreviated as SAP landscape, landscape transformation. Now what does SAP landscape transformation do? It does nothing but it triggers right it triggers any kind of replication 
and SLT replication permits data transfer from one source to the other source or, or maybe from one source to the target where the source can be an SAP or non SAP but the target has to be an SAP simplifying this if let us consider you have an organization and I have an organization now my company X is non SAP and you are an SAP guy now your company if it comes to me I would say alright fine now I want this now at this point of time I do not have any SAP right now and it is your duty to get this installed at this point or at this juncture SLT can be best explained because you being the source or I being the source and you being the target right it is ensuring that your data is traveling from non SAP to SAP system right and we have three replication techniques you know which are supported by SAP HANA they are SLT second is SBODS or it is simply called as BODS which is business object data services and then finally you have SAP HANA direct extractor connection which is SDXC right so SDXC is SAP direct extractor connection so these are some or these are the three important methods which SLT provides for and they are very important when do we change the number of data transfer jobs now this is another tricky question the number of data transfer jobs are generally changed when the initial loading speed or you know you have a latency on replication time when these kind of issues are seen that is when we change the number of data transfer jobs and at the end of the initial load the number of initial load jobs can be reduced okay so this is what data transfer jobs mean the next is how to perform backup and recovery options now this comes very handy when you have any kind of a problem with you know your regular work process but during any regular operation data is naturally stored like you do not have to do anything it is naturally stored to the disk at save points at least in SAP HANA that's what it happens we have already seen about or you know we have already talked about save points in this question that is just give me a second we were just talking about the this backup and recovery options right in which you have save points now these save points are uh, referred to you know different things but then when you're talking of it to be very precise then you have it in the persistence layer right now persistence layer has something called as save points this is what we've been discussing in question number two so these save points what they do is they capture any information which is unattended or unsaved and whenever there is a problem this log becomes active and it gets saved from the disk memory and whenever you have a power failure or any kind of a problem and you are not able to retrieve or you are not able to view your data then the database which is present in your SAP HANA it restarts like any other database returning to the last save point so basically you will again go back to the last point where you left your work right but SAP HANA requires backup to protect against disk failure and reset database to the previous state failing to which you would not have your proper backup and recovery happening now this backs up simultaneously as the user keeps performing his tasks now this means the data the next question is define modeling studio in SAP HANA administration we have seen what modeling studio is for a developer in the previous video and here we have for an admin so modeling studio is nothing but an operational tool in SAP HANA you know and this is based completely on Eclipse development and administration which includes live project creations also so basically SAP HANA studio it also builds development objects and deploys them to access and modify data models like HTML and JavaScript files. They also handle various data services to perform data input from SAP to other databases. Right? And then you would also notice that these are responsible for scheduling any kind of data replication task. Then in the last question, we have mentioned the advantages of SLT replication. 
एस एल टी इज एस ए पी लैंडस्केप ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन रेप्लीकेशन एंड दिस वर्क ऑन ट्रिगर बेस्ड अप्रोच एंड इट हैज नो मेजरेबल परफॉर्मेंस अपार्ट फ्रॉम दिस इट ऑल्सो ऑफर्स फिल्टरिंग कैपेसिटी इट एनेबल्स रियल टाइम डेटा रेप्लीकेशन फ्रॉम नॉन एस ए पी टू एस ए पी एंड फुली इंटीग्रेटेड विद हैना स्टूडियोज नाउ द रेप्लीकेशन फ्रॉम सेवरल सोर्स सिस्टम टू वन हैना सिस्टम इज ऑल्सो अलाउड right and also from one source system to multiple hana systems can also be seen so slt replication is a real time hero because of this you have transformations on multiple platforms at multiple levels happening so i hope you have enjoyed today's session and learned some more from this do stay subscribed to this channel tech tablet daily dose for many more videos yet to be released and a lot of knowledge yet to be exchanged between us hope you enjoyed thank you you have a great day there